Hey everyone, we are back with another review of another watercolor crayon. So this is Crayola, but not just any Crayola, it's Crayola Signature. Their signature line is kind of their more fancy one. <laughs> um, the price really isn't that bad, but the 12 count of Vibrant Colors comes in this really pretty packaging. Um, so let's pop it open, maybe. Do the whole unboxing fun, see what's in there. Ooh, okay, so we need to hold it this way. All right, so we're done with the case for now. Let's see. So it does come with a paintbrush. Honestly, this is an incredibly cheap paintbrush. But the bristles, ooh, these would be nice not for these crayons, but for some of my mixed media. So I'm actually gonna, right now, toss that in the bin. <laughs> All right, let's take a look at the crayons. Maybe. So they're all in here nice and tight, which is good, but they would fall out if you opened it backwards. Um, triangular shape. Nothing super fancy here. I mean, these are not going to be open stock. These are not artist grade. These are by, you know, these are going to fall into the budget beginner category, but they've got a name on them. And a cute array of 12 colors, and we'll swatch them to see if they're mixable. Now, what do we got here? Ooh. Did they give me a mixing palette? Yep, it is. It's a mixing sheet. That's what this clear thing is. That's actually really nice of them. Um, Grand Dash doesn't even do that. <laughs> hint, hint. All right, so they have like some tips and tricks showing you kind of how to layer, which is good if you're new to watercolor crayons. You know, you can you do one layer, let it dry, add in your other colors. So that's a pretty cool little thing there. Oh, they even show you how to do it on dark paper. And then, yep, they have a technique. So basically with that mixing sheet they gave you, they're showing you how to mix and create colors. This is actually not bad. Um, I mean, considering this is Crayola. So because I'm doing <clears throat> testing though, I am going to use my Carandash palette. Otherwise I would use their sheet. I am gonna keep their sheet though, because that would be handy. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do as part of the testing is we're gonna swatch out all of the colors, and I'll speed that up, of course. And then we will test them on a few different papers. I also have the watercolor crayon worksheet. Now, I created this to do a comparison of all the crayons we will be doing this little battle for. So quite a few of these we'll be able to fill out during this review. Past reviews, I didn't. Um, so I'll be going back and filling those out for the battle, but might as well get it done while we're here, right? So some things we'll check is, you know, how they feel dry, how they activate with water. Also, when they're dry, can we put pencils on top of them? And then we'll do a little bit of a difference between putting it on the palette versus taking it off the tip and then lifting. So basically, once it's dry, will it re-wet and move? Um, and then well, reactivate. <laughs> I don't have those both on. Oh, no, I'm sorry. Whew, my brain. Lifting is lifting it up with, um, like, you know, tissue paper and then reactivating. <laughs> I was like, why did I do that? We're going to create a blend, see how well they blend. I'm also just going to take a single color, put it pretty heavily down here, pigment, and drag it and just see, one, if it drags well, but two, how transparent versus opaque it is. Now some of these other areas I'll be filling in when we do the battle, so we're not going to worry about that, but at least we can get the sheet knocked out. And I will be swatching them on this paper here. So this is actually the Fantasia, did I just say Fantasia? I meant Fabriano. This is the Fabriano Aquarelle sketchbook that I've been using to test. Um, it's cold pressed but not 100% cotton. I'm just swatching straight on it. so. A little test on that, but I also have my etcher cold press where we've been slowly adding test pages somewhere back here. Oh, there we go. Um, so we've been doing like little tests with other brands of crayons. Oh, that rained. <laughs> so um, I'll keep that off to the side so we can use that as well. All right, so for the swatching to make this go as fast as possible. 
I'm going to speed this up for you guys. And then I think what I will do is because I still want to see the color of each one of these off of the palette, similar to how I've done with my other swatches. So the crayon will be fully activated. I'm going to do like a little dry swatch and then across the name I'm going to do a palette swatch. Now I am going to use the same brush, Princeton Aqua Elite. Um, this is number eight round. And then I got a little paint puck cup. So let's get going. Okay, so while those swatches dry, but as you can see, they're actually not too bad, let's go ahead and fill out some of this chart here. So let me grab my pigment liner. Um, the stamps I used were those stamps I always tend to use from um, Arete. I'll try to remember to link them. Now, something I noticed instantly when I was putting these down, and yep, even on this smooth cardstock, these are very smooth. So we are going to circle smooth. All right, let's do activated with water on this one. I'm using light pressure. All right, pencils on top. Let's pick a color that I'll do this light green so that I can use a color that will show on top. All right, versus the palette and the tip, I'm gonna go with the magenta. And I try to use a variety of colors here just to give you an idea. Actually, we'll go with the red, just so we can see the difference. All right, so I'm putting a fresh coat down. I don't wanna reuse that one just in case, but so we'll take it off the palette first. These dissolve on the palette better than Lyra and everybody else, <laughs> other than Grand Dash. All right, now I'll just pull right off the crayon because yes, you can do this. Oh, let me get enough off of there. Come on. Sometimes it takes a little bit more because you have to get it wet enough, but there we go. Okay, it's a light wash, but hey, is what it is. Now let me get my tissue because we want to see how this lifts. Okay, so I'm going to just put a little bit down here. And then we'll put the red down here as well to see if we can reactivate it. Transparency, let's use that blue again. Okay, menu. Beautiful colors, right? I'm using light pressure, by the way, when I'm doing this. All right, for blending, I think I would like to do a blend of this yellow, which I think is called, oh, just yellow, um, into the yellow-green, 
into the forest screen. Okay, so first things first, let's activate anything that needs to be activated so we can test it later. So let's activate this blue here. Oh wow, even on the cardstock. Now I did notice when I was first swatching, some of them weren't dissolving. They just needed more water. So I gave them more water and they were fine. But look at how well these are dissolving on cardstock, which is rare. I mean, even some of the more artist grade ones <clears throat> I have trouble with. Okay, so we're gonna lift this one and we're going to reactivate this one once it's fully dry. Get that one nice and juicy. All right, so real quick, let's see how well, doesn't lift much. And in fact, when you lift the color off, it leaves lines. Isn't that interesting? <laughs> yeah. That's, I find that kind of interesting. All right, <clears throat> so we're gonna check the transparency here. So I'm gonna get this nice and juicy and just kind of drag it out with my brush. This brush holds a lot of water, but yep, that's about as far as it's gonna go. But it's not opaque. All right, now we're gonna do some blending. We're just literally, I'm gonna go right here in a row just to see how they blend together. It's actually not bad. It's a fairly smooth blend. Add too much water here. I can see some of this light green not dissolving as well right there, which is interesting because it did up there. So let's have these dry for a second and I'll pull out my etcher cold press because we do want to test it on watercolor paper. So let's get that forest green and the red, because both of those sort of dissolved in some cases and didn't in others. So again, this is 100% cotton, while the one I swatched on is cold pressed, but not 100% cotton. Look at that one, let's see if I add more water. So these do not dissolve on 100% cotton. They spread, but the lines stay see how the red does. Now as I've always said I use watercolor pen or crayons same as pencils. I want I want to put them on the paper and dissolve them. I don't want to go from the palette. However when you're traveling and whatnot it's kind of nice to be able to just pull off the palette and you can mix up you know different colors. Like I could take this blue here and this red here. Get a little more of this blue on my palette. And now I've made a nice dusky purple that's not even in our palette. Let's see if I take this yellow, which is reactivating on the palette, so I have a feeling it's going to reactivate. It may not reactivate on the, <clears throat> whatchamacallit, um, <laughs> the paper, but that's, I test it on the paper because I'm trying to make a nice little murky brown here. Um, I test it on the paper because say you're doing layers, oh look at that one, you want to know if you go over to do layer number two, is that going to reactivate? Okay, so um, dissolving on watercolor paper, not so much at all. The lines are there as clear as day, however off the palette, great and they mix great too. Are their colors as vibrant? Say, look up here at like, was this neo color? I don't know. No, this couldn't have been neo color. Either way, if you compare like the vibrancy of what I've mixed, it's always going to be less than the straight off crayon. But we'll get these. Okay. <clears throat> so let's talk about the colors now that they are dry. So I don't need to go and swatch them on paper like we did the other brands here because I did them here. Now. In the beginning, I was like, okay, these are not dissolving for crap. However, as I started adding more water, they were dissolving a lot better. But now that they are dry, you can see right here, violet 
is still full of lines. Now this is a very rough paper. I'm just seeing if I can get those lines to go away. Lots and lots of water. And same thing up here. Let's try this red. Let's see if I can't get the... It doesn't want to come off. These have a lot of ridges on this paper because of the way it's just designed, but if they're not dissolving on 100% cotton, and that's what I would use them on, yeah. But at most of the time I use my watercolor pencils or watercolor crayons in adult coloring books, so that's the thing. Okay, so here is our sheet. Um, we have a few things that we can actually answer. So, activated with water. Because of how it activated he here, versus the others, I'm going to say it's kind of an in-between, right? Let's, let's do well, but also poorly. <laughs> um, are they vibrant when they're activated? Yes, I would definitely give them that. They're not very muted when they're activated. Um, pencils on top of product, we'll try in a second. Dissolves well in a palette, absolutely. Absolutely. They're muted off the palette, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. Now they definitely do not lift. <laughs> so now let's see if we can reactivate this one now that it's dry. Never judge a watercolor. Yeah, so it is reactivating because see how it's still coming out? It's, it's pinkish because there's not much pigment left. But as you can see, it's coming out of the circle. That said, I would say it doesn't reactivate well. So I'm going to say reactivates and then put a little note here, sort of. <laughs> okay, transparency. Definitely a transparent. Um, I would actually say the pigment drags well, but as you can see here, it didn't dissolve as great. Now here's something interesting. The blending initially looked good, right? But now you're seeing the lines. So I am going to say they do blend well, but I'm just going to put another sort of because, yeah, well, sort of. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab a coloring book right here. I'm just going to use a Maria Trollet. I'm going to go to the back. Move my palette. Let's see how they work on her test page here. Because coloring books often have different texture than my cardstock. Still nice and soft. Let's see if I'm going to do like some sort of night sky. And this is where I would use these a lot. So I want to see how they're going to look. Now, on an adult coloring book, you don't want to use a ton of water because the paper can pill and get all crumbly and icky. Now see, they're not, yeah, I did mix my purple in there. They're not dissolving as well at all. I can already see the lines forming. They look okay right now because they're wet. But if you look, you can see those lines. The blue actually isn't too bad. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my handy dandy Ranger dryer, dry this all up, and then maybe we can see. Okay, as you can see, now that it's officially dry, you definitely have lines there for both of them. So if you were going to activate these in your adult coloring book by putting crayons straight to paper, that's just something to keep in mind. Okay, one test we need to do is pencils on top of the dry product. Feeling it, it is, you know, it has that feeling like you just applied watercolor, but it's not chalky. So that's a good thing. I have a Derwent Pro color here in chocolate. I just wanted a color that would, oh, these go on top of it, great. Sometimes you get wax buildup that it doesn't let you put something on. And this is a hard pencil that does not put out a lot of pigment, which is why I'm using it, versus a Prisma. But they do great. 
Look at that. I could totally pencil, shade, whatever the heck I wanted on top of it. So, yeah, you can definitely color um, color on top of the dried product. So, we did test it on an adult coloring book page, and it failed. <laughs> uh, okay, <clears throat> so... Some of this other information I will get into um, when I get to like my uh, battle, but I'll go over each sheet with each brand so you know and kind of get an idea. <clears throat> now, I really, I'm not gonna lie, I really, really wanted these to work and like just blow me out of the water because I was like, come on. Like Crayola pencils I just recently tried and I was like, oh man, why did I like wait so long? <laughs> so I was like, these are going to be it. Um, but um, there's there's some pros and cons. Um, in the instances where they do activate, beautiful. You can put pencils on top of them, which is very important because a lot of watercolor crayons, you cannot. There's too much buildup. Off the palette, these colors are quite nice and they're not chalky. So that's something to keep in mind. When you go to lift them, you've basically unearthed the undissolved pencil, so I would not suggest that. They sort of reactivate, but not anything like crazy. However, they do reactivate on the palette. So they don't reactivate on your paper, which is a good thing, but they do reactivate on the palette. Now that's where you want them to reactivate. I want them to reactivate on my palette so all this that I put here doesn't go to waste. Now I don't want them to reactivate on my paper because when I go to put in layer number two, I don't want layer number one, <clears throat> layer number one to reactivate so much that it mixes together and makes mold. But if they're reactivating on the palette, that means I can literally, say I'm gonna go watch my daughter's ballet. I could fill up this palette or just take my crayons with me <clears throat> and this palette and a water brush and just put in little dabs of crayon, activate them and use them and know that that paint is still there. Like the whole crayon is usable. So as you're sharpening these, you just pull down the paper and keep going. Save the sharpenings, please. Overall though, these aren't bad. Like, I mean, this is Crayola. Okay, so let's remember that we have compared artist grade like Lyra and Neocolor 2. So this is Crayola. <laughs> like, we've got to accept the fact that Crayola is probably not going to beat out a Neocolor 2. However, these are pretty darn good for being Crayola. Um, I will leave a link in the description below kind of explaining or, uh, you know, linking to Amazon. So in case you want to try them out. The biggest set I could find was a 12 count. Uh, if there is a bigger set, let me know, but as far as I know, they only have a 12 count. I absolutely love that they give you, and this is really thick paper, but, or plastic, they give you this little mixing palette. Like this whole kit, because they give you a water brush, you could technically take on the go, but I would do, or I'm sorry, a paintbrush, I would do a water brush. If I was Crayola and, you know, Crayola was ever listening, I'd say, hey Crayola, make a water brush. Not a watercolor brush, water brush, so that this whole kit could be ready to go, because it would be. You have your mixing sheet, and yeah, everything works. And in fact, let's just real quick, let's just test out the mixing sheet, because it is part of it. Oh, they, they go on there perfectly. Look at that. Why am I missing a crayon? Who knows? All right. Let me grab my etcher. Actually, I'll just switch to this page back here real quick. Because, I mean, they did provide it to us, so we might as well try it, right? Okay, so I'm going to see. Well, they dissolve lovely on the plastic. That's not bad. They are a little bit more muted on this plastic palette. See, cause like that green there would be a lot darker 
or I mean a lot darker on here. Yes, I have a paintbrush in my mouth as I said that. But that same green off this palette is that one. So lighter colors, but that's the whole point of watercolor. It's supposed to be transparent, not going for ink tents. And then the nice thing is you can just wipe this off. Can't do that with my palette over here. So keep that in mind. Um, but yeah, I am actually impressed. They, I mean, I came in assuming these would perform very poorly because of their price point and their Crayola, but I'm actually quite impressed considering what they are. These would be ones where I, again, would probably recommend just going off the palette um, and not trying to activate them on your paper, but we shall see. So I will be doing the Stabilo watercolor crayons, also sometimes called watercolor pencils, but we're throwing them in the crayon category. Um, that will be the last one to test. And then I will be filling out all of the sheets for all of the brands because I only finished this up just recently. And then I will do a final like little battle telling you what I think is the best for each category. So in the comments below, do me a favor. Tell me categories you want to see. Um, I already have one for budget. I have one for um, light fast. I have one for, you know, most value for your buck. So that's not budget, but what, what's going to give you the most payout per, per like per crayon price? Um, but yeah, I would love to know any categories you want covered for this so that I can give you the rankings and all of the crayons will be ranked per category. All right, because I'd love to finish that up this week, maybe beginning of next week, so that we can finally go on to the watercolor pencils. But yeah, not too shabby. Hope, thank you for hanging out with me, and until next time, take care. Bye now.